Hey, Tommy with Studio Sense here. Hope this video reaches everyone doing fantastic and staying safe. I'm excited about today's video because I'm going to bring to you seven fragrances that kind of fell off the hype train. What's the hype train? It's the train that certain fragrances ride either through marketing. There's just so many fragrances that take the limelight away from fragrances that really deserve our attention. And that's why I did this video today. And when we return, we're gonna look at those seven fragrances, talk about what's good about each one of them, why you should own them, and in particular, why you should hurry to own one of them, that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Really appreciate you checking out this video today and I hope to bring you some good and new information and for my loyal viewers, thanks so much for checking in with me today and looking at today's video. I think you'll agree that some of these fragrances definitely deserve more attention. The first one we're gonna be talking about is from the house of Givenchy and it is a very well-known fragrance, but again, it not, doesn't really get talked about that much. It doesn't get brought up as much as I feel like it should. Therefore, it is an underrated gem. It is Givenchy Pie. Now, you pie lovers out there, you know who you are. You often request me to do a review or to include this in a list or talk about it, and with good reason. This is a fantastic fragrance. It's one of the very few fragrances that came out of the 1990s that actually still has a very modern twist to its fragrance DNA. And in fact, this is one of the few fragrances you can go to Macy's right now and pay 100 and, well, no, actually $94, I think is what the 100 ml bottle for Eau de Toilette. This is a 100 ml bottle in this really neat flacon here. You've got the pie symbol on the front of it. You've got like a little rotating bell handle at the top. And this is where you depress the, the atomizer. The back of the bottle is actually grooved a little bit. So it feels really neat in the hand. And of course, it's in the form of a, a triangle on the bottom. Givenchy really outdid themselves when they created this and master perfumer, AKA rock star, Alberto Maria is who actually created this. This fragrance I call the fragrance that should have been a cookie because it has so many fragrant notes in it that's in like a cookie recipe. You've got like vanilla, almond, brown sugar, aniseed, neroli. I mean, there's just a ton of really fragrant ingredients that make this near gourmand but somehow it stays away from the super sweet gourmand fragrance. It's just this supremely masculine, this just emanates masculine when you spray it on. It has become many people's signature scent, but again, it flies under the radar and a lot of people have just forgotten that it exists. I highly recommend checking it out. If you've never smelled Givenchy Pie, it definitely deserves your attention. It stayed alive for 20 years, so there is something to it and you should check it out. This fragrance I'm getting ready to talk about, it never really caught on. The few people that wear it swear by it. I, for one, think it's an amazing fragrance that doesn't garner enough attention. It is a Calvin Klein fragrance that came out in 2015, and it's called Calvin Klein Reveal. Now, anyone who's ever used this fragrance knows what I'm talking about. It's one of those that when you first smell it, it might be off-putting to you, but you've gotta wait for that dry down. That dry down is amazing. Pear brandy, candied sugar, kawano melon, uh, mastic resin in the top. It's got agave, clary sage, and suede in the heart. It's got amber, um, Haitian vetiver, or pure, I believe, in the base, as well as some tonka bean in there. It is a very sweet fragrance, and that's what puts some people off, but that sweetness dries up a little bit, and the very dry down of this fragrance is where it really shines. It always stays a little bit boozy and a little bit candied, a little bit sweet. So it is a gourmand fragrance, but it's one of the better, more masculine um, gourmand fragrances. Versatility of this fragrance is off the charts. It is extremely wearable in any situation, perfect for date nights, perfect for cooler weather, a wonderful winter fragrance. In fact, all of these that I'm featuring today are appropriate for cooler weather, and that's one reason I'm giving them some attention and drawing your attention to them as well. Olivier Guillotin, Rodrigo Flores Rowe, May Pierre Julien, all three of those master perfumers came together to create this, what I consider, masterpiece. And if you haven't tried this fragrance out, you're doing yourself a disservice. Check out Calvin Klein Reveal. Next up is a fragrance that I always look forward to when winter weather comes, when cooler weather comes, because I can't wait to get it out and wear it again because I have such fond memories of its usage. And yet not a lot of people or anyone ever talk about it. It is a Kenneth Cole fragrance. 
and it is Kenneth Cole Signature. This fragrance came out in 2005. It was the creation of Frank Vocal. Grapefruit, cardamom, pimento, and violet in the top. Espresso, iris, it's got uh, water lily and some other marine notes in the heart. Amber, guyac wood, papyrus, and patchouli are the base that surrounds this and fixes all those fragrant notes together. The best way that I can use to describe this is have you ever, and many of you have not, so you have to imagine this, have you ever taken an ax in your hand, gone outside, chopped wood for about 30 minutes to an hour till your hands were sore, until you were sweating, but you could feel the tension in every muscle. You come inside, you take your shirt off, you're sweating, but you just, you feel alive and you feel vibrant because you've had that exercise. You've done something that's going to sustain you through a cold winter by gathering some firewood. It just, it's a, a wonderful manly experience that makes you feel good. It's good for you. All of those things up to and including the smell of an actual wood fire in a fireplace. That's what all of this reminds me of. It has a really nice espresso note too for you coffee lovers out there. You'll really enjoy that. You don't really catch it in the open, but from the mid to the dry down, that espresso note, it really just highlights the dry, warm masculinity of this great fragrance. This is definitely one you should pick up if you don't already have it. Kenneth Cole Signature. Plus it has one of my favorite features of any presentation, the magnetic cap. Now this next fragrance I almost left off this list because it was one that Jeremy Fragrance gave a little bit of kind of hype to back in the day which was not that long ago, actually. Um, and he said that women loved the smell of this. And, and while that's true, and while that's definitely noteworthy, that's not really the reason you want to own this fragrance. The reason you want to own it is because it's an amazing fragrance. Now it was originally released in 2015 as an eau de toilette, and then it was released again in 2016 at 14% higher concentration of oils in an eau de parfum version. And I'm of course referring to Boss Bottled Intense. Boss Bottled Intense is an amazing fragrance. I know um, Imagine Sense Timmy was talking about how he couldn't get his nose out of this, and I'm the same way when I start when I smell it. It's really hard for me not to overspray it. It's such a wonderful, alluring fragrance very magnetic. It's definitely one that people have forgotten. It's kind of fallen by the wayside. This contains a really nice fresh apple note. That's the best thing about, really that's the best thing about Hugo Boss as a house, is how they treat the apple accord. It's almost like they patented apple because it appears in the string of all of the DNA and all of the scent profiles and fragrances, almost all of their mainline fragrances, and this is no exception. Super fresh apple, bright bergamot, orange blossom. You have that winter making DNA or profile with that uh, clove, cinnamon, rosewood, geranium, cedar wood, uh, olive, there's an olive tree wood in here, and then sandalwood and vetiver all come together to make a extremely wonderful, and it has a great durability to it too. The longevity is excellent, the legs are excellent on this as an eau de parfum, it's a true eau de parfum. The projection is better than most Hugo Boss fragrances that suffer projection a lot of times, so you'll really enjoy this if you have it, getting it out again, and if you don't have it, it's a must own. Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum. This next fragrance is from a house that decided to do fragrances of popular television shows, and it seems like they only did one. And that's 24 The Fragrance from Sensory. Now this is 24 The Eau de Toilette. There is an Oud version. We're talking today about the original. This fragrance, when it first came out, didn't get a lot of attention. And I think Ash from Gin Sense reviewed it. It started getting more attention from other fragrance reviewers. And then the price jacked up a little bit. And then it came back down and kind of settled into a nice happy medium, which is where it sits right now. Yet a lot of people have forgotten just how good this fragrance is. Now that cooler weather is here, if you own it, pick it back up again, dust it off, give it some wear. You'll be surprised at how much you enjoy it. Guyac wood, jasmine, uh, that really nice oud in the heart of it. Aniseed, sandalwood, cedar wood, amber, vanilla, and a very intoxicating ylang ylang. What I love about 24 is it rides that fine line straight down the middle for a unisex fragrance. As a unisex fragrance, it doesn't cant to one side or the other. It doesn't give florals too much attention and it doesn't give strong animalics too much attention or, or strong, dry, or whatever, whatever you consider most masculine. It takes both elements of male and female, combines them together and makes a fantastic synergy between the two. And that's why 24 is such a great fragrance. And that's why I recommend either picking it up at a good discount or dusting it off if you already own it 
start giving it some wear. This next fragrance came out quietly in 2017. We were all looking in a different direction, again, at, at another hype train fragrance. It came out, nobody knew about it. I think Ash from Jensen's talked about it recently. So I'm really happy to see it get some attention and maybe you, as a result, have gotten it or are going to get it, but I highly recommend checking Jupe Wow out. It's an unusual name. You know, Jupe, they like to have their little quirky one name bottles and this is no exception but wow actually turns out to be a really really nice masculine scent some of the best note combinations that are perfect for cooler weather and perfect for year-round wear this they finally put some attention and when i say jupe finally so to me a lot of jupe offerings are a little bit lackluster and the campaign launched they really put some money behind the campaign one of my favorite because i love black panthers and I think that's a really cool poster. Didn't get any attention. Bergamot, cardamom, violet in the top. You've got geranium, fir balsam, and vetiver in the heart. And one of my favorite trios, cashmere, tonka bean, and vanilla. Christophe Reynaud is the perfumer that created this. It's brilliant, did a fantastic job. This fragrance has a robust, manly quality about it, but it has little bits and pieces of yesteryear in terms of masculinity uh, in terms of robust durability so i'm really happy to see definitely an underrated gem and i see this going a lot farther i highly recommend giving jupe wow your attention a lot of you are like me that you like to wake up with a cup of coffee in the morning and sometimes we like that coffee in our fragrances this next fragrance came out in 2016 it's an eau de toilette concentration or what they call a blended fragrance it is from robert graham and it's Valor. Now this first came out in a trio of fragrances called Courage, Fortitude, and Valor. And unfortunately, Valor has become discontinued. So it's really hard to find. It used to be at discounters. It used to be at rack stores. That's where I got this one. You wanna talk about a really good buy. Finding this for 25, 30 bucks will make your day. And it's actually still out there. So don't hesitate to run to your rack stores right now to see if you could find Robert Graham's Valor because you cannot find it at any discounter. At least I've not been able to find it on any discounter. And even if you go to Robert Graham's website, all you can find is Fortitude and the Discovery set of the trio. So if you do find Valor and are lucky enough to grab it up, I highly recommend checking it out. Very simple scent profile. Clary Sage, Brazilian coffee, and Amberwood. When you spray this on for the first three or four hours, that coffee note is prominent. Coffee note is designed not to like stick with the fragrance. In this case, it does dry down and kind of go away. There's a little bit of it here or there that perks up, no pun intended, in the fragrance as time goes on, but it mostly dries down into a really nice semi-sweet clary sage combination of sage and amber. So it's a, it's a nice, sweet, warm, coffee-centric fragrance. If any of that is your jam, you'll really enjoy Valor. Now, what I really like about this fragrance, most coffee fragrances are wholly casual. This one actually looks good with a suit. <laughs> when you pair this with suit and tie or, or some kind of formal wear, it goes really, really well. It's got a little bit of a sophistication in there, really due to its simplicity, I think. And that's what makes this such a great find because it opens up the versatility quite a bit. Robert Graham's Valor. Well, guys, that's it for my seven underrated fragrances, hidden gems of designer fragrances. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. And if you own any of these, tell me what your experience has been like. What do you think of these? And what fragrances out there do you feel also belong in this category of underrated fragrances that don't garner a lot of attention? Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my video today. As always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.